إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وسفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam when observing everything going on in the world today, we should always remind ourselves of the numerous blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Many of these blessings we tend to be heedless about. Many of these blessings, even though we witness them on a daily basis, throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening, throughout the night, we experience them, we witness them, but many of us are heedless and unattentive to these blessings. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in an authentic hadith, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِ مُعَافًا فِي جَسَدِ عِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us about three wonderful blessings that many of us experience on a daily basis, but many of us are heedless about, 
Many of us are inappreciative and many of us are ungrateful about these three ni'am. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whoever wakes up in the morning safe, secure, protected in his dwelling, healthy in his body, having food for his day, then it is as if the entire world has been gathered for him. Many of us as Muslims have a place to reside, whether it's a house, apartment, villa, condo, shack, tent in the woods. Some may even live in a cardboard box. But how many of us within those dwellings are safe in those dwellings? Many of us who have big houses or big townhouses, we're always putting up cameras, always putting up surveillance or fences to protect our houses, to protect our dwellings. Many of us living in the West only have to worry about our houses being broken into or maybe someone vandalizing some property that we have in our backyard or in our front driveway. But what about our brothers and sisters in Yemen? What about our brothers and sisters in Syria? What about our brothers and sisters in Libya? What about our brothers and sisters in Gaza who can't even rest for one minute inside their houses, inside their dwellings without worrying about their homes being bombed, without their homes being broken into, without their dwellings being raided or invaded. Think about our brothers and sisters over the past decade in many of the Muslim lands, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Tunis, Libya, and Yemen. Were they ever able to wake up in the morning and feel safe, insecure in their dwellings? What about our brothers and sisters in Burma, who many of us have forgotten about? Or many of our brothers and sisters in India, are they able to wake up in the morning and feel safe and secure in their homes, in their dwellings? Subhanallah. When we just reflect over this first thing that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِ When we just think about this thing, we realize that a large percentage of not only human beings throughout the world, but a large percentage of Muslims, our Muslim brothers and sisters throughout the world, they cannot even wake up in the morning feeling safe in their homes, in their dwellings, or their residences. The second thing that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in this hadith is having a healthy body. There may be many who feel safe and secure in their dwellings, in their houses, in their residences, but they don't have the ability to walk. They don't have the ability to see. Maybe they are blind or have a vision impairment. Maybe some of them can't stand up while they're praying. Or maybe some of them can no longer prostrate. Some may be disabled. They might have cancer or diabetes, which might not allow them to work. Some may have cancer, high blood pressure or arthritis. They may be wealthy and live in luxurious homes and drive fancy cars. But because of sickness, illness, and diseases, they are not able to leave their homes or travel or enjoy those things that Allah has blessed them with. So health is more valuable than wealth. Health is more valuable than wealth. How many people have we known who may need a liver transplant? a heart transplant, a kidney transplant, but they've been waiting for years to find the correct donor. Or they found a donor, but they don't have the tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase a new heart, a new liver, or a new kidney. 
So they may have amassed a large amount of wealth, but now the wealth isn't able to aid them or fix their health concerns or issues. So eating healthy, exercising, consuming only the halal, and avoiding the haram are of the utmost importance and are the real wealth of an individual. The third thing that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in this hadith was having enough food for today. The scale of the global hunger and malnutrition crisis is enormous. According to statistics, more than 333 million people are facing acute levels of food insecurity in 2023 and do not know where their next meal is coming from. How many of our brothers and sisters over the past decade have we seen struggling with finding enough food to last them through the day? Just this past week and during these days, we see that Gaza and our brothers and sisters have been cut off from food and water. They won't even allow humanitarian aid in. And many do not even know where their next meal is going to come from. Yemen, for the past decade, is starving and suffering from malnutrition. Many of the Muslims throughout the world, and specifically us living in the United States of America, are heedless to many of these three blessings that the Messenger wasallam mentioned in this hadith. The first blessing, living safely and securely and protected in your house, in your dwelling. Number two, having a healthy body. And number three, having enough food to supply you for the day. For sure, there are at least 60 to 70 percent of the world's population, many of them Muslims, who do not have these three blessings simultaneously throughout much of their lives. May Allah guide us to be more grateful and constantly thank Him for these blessings that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in this hadith. Many times throughout the Qur'an and the Sunnah, we find that the chronological order of things are based upon their importance. The most important and the greatest thing being mentioned first, then the less important things coming after them. When we reflect and ponder over this hadith, we find that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam he mentioned the greatest blessing, the most important blessing that any human being can acquire in this dunya, as well as in the hereafter. And this is al aman this is safety, this is security, this is protection. The virtue of safety, of security, of protection are the greatest blessings that one can acquire after the blessing of Islam and the blessing of Iman. Only those who the blessing of being safe and secure and protected in your dwelling, only those who, who have this blessing has been taken away, will realize the greatness and importance of this blessing in daily life. How many of our brothers and sisters throughout the world have experienced the terrible loss of this blessing of safety in their dwellings, of security in their dwellings, of being protected in their dwellings. If we think about our brothers and sisters in Iraq, we think about our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. We think about our brothers and sisters in Syria. We think about our brothers and sisters in Yemen. We think about our brothers and sisters in Tunis. We think about our brothers and sisters in Libya. We think about our brothers and sisters in Egypt. And we think about our brothers and sisters in Palestine. They woke up this morning, many of them, or throughout the past couple of decades, they would wake up in the morning to the sounds of gunshots, to the sounds of bombs, riots, glass breaking, protests, horns beeping, sounds going off that there's going to be a, a missile dropped on them. 
Waking up to bandits outside their houses. Waking up to armed militias invading their cities and homes as we see now, which is going on in Sudan as well. Looting, burning, kidnapping, and other types of chaos and anarchy. Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us in the Qur'an about those who will experience and realize the highest level of safety and security in this dunya as well as in the next. As Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِذُلْمْ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Allah, He says, it is those who truly believe and do not mix their belief with dhul, with shirk, with associating partners with Allah, that they will have complete safety. They will have complete security. They will have complete protection in this world as well as in the next. And not only will they acquire and attain complete protection, safety and security, but they will also be guided in this world as well as in the next. So we find in this verse, brothers and sisters, that Allah promises the believers that whoever realizes, learns, and understands the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, Islamic monotheism, and purifies his creed and aqidah from all types of foreign ideologies and foreign beliefs, and does righteous good deeds, then they will have complete safety and security. Not only did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam show concern to safety and security, but he also showed great concern towards health and being free from illness and sicknesses and ailments in this world that can affect our hereafter as well. It was from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's regular practice to ask Allah every morning and every evening for safety, security, and forgiveness. As it has been narrated, لَمْ يَكُنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَدْعُ هَأُولَاءِ دَعَوَاتِ حِينَ يُمْسِي وَحِينَ يُسْبِحْ اللهم إني أسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في ديني ودنياي وأهلي ومالي The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم never failed to ask Allah عز وجل for safety, security and forgiveness He never failed to say these supplications Every time he woke up in the morning and every time that he went to bed at night, he would say, Oh Allah, I ask you for security and safety in this world and in the hereafter. And he would say, Oh Allah, I ask you for forgiveness and security and safety in my religion and in my worldly affairs, in my family and in my wealth and in my property. The Prophet ﷺ, he also told us that many people are heedless and negligent in regards to understanding the second blessing that he mentioned in the hadith, the blessing of having good health, the blessing of having a body and a mind which is free of sicknesses and ailments. The Messenger ﷺ, he said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاضِ He said two blessings, two ni'mas, many people are heedless about, many people are negligent about, many people don't pay any attention to them at all. These two blessings are having good health and having free time and utilizing your free time for things that will benefit you. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he advised us to benefit from our good health before we become sick, before we become ill, before we become elderly, 
before we become afflicted with health concerns that inhibit us from doing the things which we were able to do in our youth or which we were able to do in our days that we were healthy. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس Take advantage of five things before five things. And from amongst the things that he mentioned, سحتك قبل السقمك He said, benefit from your health, benefit from the days, your youth, your vitality, the days that you are healthy, before you become sick, before you become ill, before you become someone who is afflicted with ailments or diseased. May Allah protect us all and cure all of our brothers and sisters in Islam who have any sicknesses. One of the great companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذَرَ الْمَسَاء if you wake up in the morning, don't expect to survive until the evening. وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذَرُ sabah. And if you survive until the evening, don't expect to live until the morning. وَخُذْ مِنْ سَحَّتِكْ لِمَرَضِكْ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكْ لِمَوْتِكْ And take advantage of your health and your healthy days for your sick days and take advantage of your life before your death. Brothers and sisters in Islam, what we have seen and what we are seeing throughout the world in Yemen, Libya, Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, Burma, India, in the past and are witnessing now during these days of what's happening in Philistine, and many of our brothers and sisters in the hospital, losing limbs, losing lives, losing children, losing wives, losing spouses, whole entire families. This is something that rips the Muslim's heart apart. And all of those who have a sense of humanity, this is something that is heartbreaking. Those whom we know, who are suffering from sicknesses that modern day medicine has not found a cure for, need to constantly thank Allah day and night for the blessing of good health and being free from illnesses and sicknesses. As Allah tells us, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوا وَإِن تُعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا that Allah has given you everything that you have asked for. If you were to try to enumerate the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you, you would never be able to take account for them. Indeed, human beings are ungrateful. Indeed, human beings are heedless. Indeed, human beings are oppressive oppressive to themselves by not being grateful to Allah and not appreciative to the blessings and the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon them. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullahu li wa lakum innahu huwa rahul الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Brothers and sisters in Islam, today we are talking about three great blessings that many of us are heedless, many of us are inattentive about: waking up safely in the morning, safe and secure in your dwelling, having good health, having a healthy body, free of ailments and sicknesses and having enough food to suffice yourself for the day. One of the things that the Messenger wasallam mentioned in this hadith, the last thing that he mentioned, he mentioned the first thing which is the most important, having aman, having safety and security. You can have food and you can have good health, but if you don't have aman, 
What protects you from somebody coming along and stealing it? What protects you from somebody coming along and breaking into your house? What protects you from road bandits who are cutting off the road and robbing the trucks and the trailers and things like that? You might have food and you might have health, but you might not have the most important thing to protect those things, the health and the food, which is safety and security. So in this hadith, the messenger, he mentioned the last thing, which is the least important for the human being. Which is food. We know we can survive without food. We go with Ramadan 16, 17 hours a day without eating or drinking. We're still alive. Alhamdulillah. There's some people who don't have food. They go for maybe three days at a time. Four days at a time. They don't eat. They don't drink. So food is one of the least important things. But it is still important. And a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, The one who has enough food for today, and Allah tells us in the Quran, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Allah, He talks about this, and worship the Lord of this Kaaba, who feeds the people against hunger, and makes them secure from fear. And the Messenger ﷺ would supplicate to Allah, and seek refuge in Allah from hunger and from being without food. As he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al ju'i, fa innahu bi'sad dajir. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from hunger. Indeed, it is the worst companion. It is the worst companion. Because if you are hungry, if you are without food, it may lead you to go to steal. It may lead you to go to rob. It may lead you to lie. It may lead you to cheat. It may lead you to kill somebody so that you can get food. So we learn from this hadith that whoever has combined these three blessings, safety, security, and protection in their dwelling, good health, and has enough food for the day, then it is as if the entire world is in their hands. There are many people who have acquired more than these things mentioned in this hadith. However, many of us are ungrateful. Many of us are unappreciative and are never satisfied and are never content with the levels of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. And Allah tells us in the Quran, يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا وَأَكْتَرُهُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ They are aware of Allah's favors, but they still deny them. How many of us deny the favor of Allah that we are safe in security and our blessings, even though we are a minority in America, even though we know the people who are running this country, but you're still safe and secure in your dwellings. But you look at Muslim countries, and Muslims aren't even safe in their own countries. A blessing, a ni'mah that we have. And Allah says, And are you still in denial of Allah's favors? How many of us wake up every day and we have food? We know what we're eating for dinner. We know what we're going to eat tomorrow. We know what we're going to eat on Friday. How many of us can walk and sit and prostrate and drive a car and, and, and these things? Look at those of our brothers and sisters who are not able to do these things. So what is the cure? What is the cure for this sickness of ungratefulness, of being unappreciative? It is upon us, brothers and sisters, to always look at those who don't have these blessings. Those who can't live or aren't living in their dwelling safe and secure right now. Those who aren't healthy, who can't walk, who can't see, who can't hear, who can't work, who can't bend down, who can't prostrate. To observe and reflect over those who are not secure or protected or safe in their dwellings. Those who are being constantly bombed, raided, invaded, kidnapped, organs being harvested, and whose lands are constantly being colonized by the enemies of Allah. It is upon us to look at those who don't have enough food for today. Those who eat only rice on a daily basis. Would you be satisfied every day if your wife just made rice? You'd be complaining. Where's the vegetables? Where's the meat? Where's the chicken? 
Those who eat only bread with nothing to put on it, no cheese, no mayonnaise, no zabadi, no lebna, nothing, no jelly, nothing, just bread. Those who make soup with stones and water so their kids don't know that they're poor. So their kids think that they're cooking meat and something, stirring it in the pot. So they don't know that they don't have anything in the pot, just water and rocks. Those who eat from the garbage bins, it is upon us to look at those who cannot walk, who cannot see, who don't have these blessings that we have, who cannot drive, who cannot prostrate, who cannot have children, who don't have arms or legs or bodies. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us the cure for our ungratefulness. When he said, "Unduru ila man asfala minkum, wa la tanduru ila man huwa fawqakum, fa huwa ajdaru an la tazdariru ni'mat Allah. He said, look at those who have less than you. And don't look at those who have more than you. It is better for you so that you are not ungrateful and unappreciative for the blessings Allah has given you. So this hadith, brothers and sisters, is comprehensive to all types of goodness. When someone sees another person who has been given more luxuries of this dunya, then we try to acquire the same things that that person has. And we don't appreciate what Allah has given us. We try to acquire more so that we reach the same level of the one with the mansion, of the one with the Lexus, of the, lo- the one with five houses, the one with five businesses. We try to compete. So when we look at those who have less than us, less of the luxuries of this dunya, then we will be more appreciative to what Allah has given us. And we thank Allah and we humble ourselves. So we always need to remember, brothers and sisters, that having a lot of worldly possessions, nice cars, big businesses, investments, is not a sign that Allah loves me or you. As Allah gives the dunya to those who He loves and those who He doesn't love. But Allah only gives iman and Islam to the ones that He loves. So we will conclude with this beautiful hadith that shows us that many of us are living like kings, but we don't even realize it. Rawal Imam Muslim fi sahihi min hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhuma anna rajulan sa'alahu faqal alasna min fuqara al-muhajirin a man came to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhuma and he said, are we not poor? And the impoverished from amongst the muhajireen, those who migrated from Mecca to Medina. فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ أَلَكَ إِمْرَأَةٌ تَأْوِي إِلَيْهَا Do you have a woman, a spouse that you live with? قَالَ نَعَمْ He said yes. Then Abdullah asked him, أَلَكَ مَسْكَنٌ تَسْكُنُهُ Do you have a house, a dwelling to live in? قَالَ نَعَمْ he said, yes. فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ فَأَنْتَ مِنَ الْأَغْنِيَةِ He said, then you are from those who are wealthy. You are from those who are rich. And then the man added on, he says, فَإِنَّ لِي خَادِمًا He says, I even have a maid servant to help me. فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ فَأَنْتَ مِنَ الْمُلُوكِ Then he said, you are from the kings. إذا اجتمع الإسلام والقوت للفتى وأضحى صحيحا جسمه وهو في أمن فقد ملك الدنيا جميعا وحازها وحق عليه شكر الله ذي المني. So even if we want brothers and sisters our blessings to increase, then we need to constantly thank Allah Azza wa Jal and be grateful as Allah tells us in the Quran. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ And remember when your Lord proclaimed, If you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. But if you are ungrateful, surely my punishment is severe. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from amongst His grateful and appreciative servants. Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
unite our hearts, unite our bodies, unite our souls, unite our kalima, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah help the Muslims all throughout the world in Palestine, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, in Burma, in India, in Libya, everywhere where Muslims are being oppressed and Muslims are being wronged. Ya Rabbil Alameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return us all back to the deen al-haqq. Ya Rabbil Alameen, which is the tool to unite us throughout the world. Wa akhra da'wana, and alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa aqeemu salam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, Qad qamad al-salah, Qad qamad al-salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Please put your phones on silent. Still over. Allah, my phone. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله بثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنب نبه الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله Shahada. <laughs>
هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله السلام عليكم ago I started a campaign raising some funds to help some of the refugees to pay for the rent. That campaign is still going on. This is the box for that. I will leave the box up here. Please um, try to help as much as you can. All right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you all is that the electronic equipments are not supposed to be touched by anyone regardless of age or gender. Those are very sensitive, they are set in modes. If, any, if those modes are changed, it will take a lot of time to figure out how we can set them back. So I appreciate, appreciate that. And we are also praying the Salat um, al-Asr, if you'd like to stay and pray with us, Salat al-Asr al May Allah, may Allah um, accept your good deeds and thank you and appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Thank you.